<laughs> I knew that was gonna come up though. If you use the new three point takedown, you would have won that match. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I we've actually talked about this. Yeah. Who do you think will represent United States at 57 kilos? That's a really good question. I just see this Drexel kid, this spaz, just like hitting his arm, slapping his face, like like, ah, like screaming and stuff. And I was like, oh boy, I gotta wrestle this kid. And it's like, you do it. And then it's like, there's life after that. And you're just like, I didn't think about this afterwards. That, you know? That's interesting. <laughs> I've always been the guy that's been second, third, second, third, bronze, silver. To be like, I'm the best right now. And I believe in myself and have that confidence. I, I couldn't be more thankful to God for that. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Clash of Combat podcast. Today, we are joined with Stefan Michich. How's it going? What's up, man? Thanks for having me, Caden. I appreciate Thank it, you. brother. It's crazy having a world champion on campus. This is pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, made the quick drive up. It was just about an hour and a half or so? Yeah, it wasn't very long at all. It was like literally, yeah, it was like an hour 40 or something. Me and Mike yeah. drove up. It's close. Like I'm in it's like South Chicago, Northwest Indiana. So mm -hmm. it's actually a pretty easy drive. My cousins live in Muskego, so it's close to you guys. Okay. Do they wrestle too? My cousin, no, he wrestled. He's five years older than me. He wrestled a little bit in like high school, but that was about it. He got, he had like a bad shoulder injury with his labrum. So, oh. yeah, I know. Just, uh, so pretty much me, I'm the only one who really wrestled. My, my little cousin wrestled for a little bit, but just pretty much me. Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of, uh, I was binging all your YouTube videos. So if you guys don't know, Stefan has a YouTube channel now documenting the journey, you know, got the Olympics coming up this summer, super cool stuff. I learned that no one in your family wrestled and yeah. you just you basically found out about wrestling through a flyer. Can you yeah. kind of explain that whole process? Okay. Yeah. So my, I come from like a, my family, like my dad's side of the family is uh, from former Yugoslavia or Serbia uh, now. And uh, so I'm Serbian and like, I think my family's always kind of had like that combat like thing about them. They my they were to jujitsu. My uncle's actually a black belt in jujitsu, and so like I've always liked for some reason liked like fighting and stuff as a kid. Mm -hmm. And when I was the only boy, so I have two younger sisters, and so like I never like could could like fully like express like fighting like beating my sisters up. Like, <laughs> my mom would like get mad. So I just remember like one day we moved. Um, we like, I went to this new elementary school in, in town because we were building the, our house. And so we moved to, into the new, the place we were living. And all of a sudden, like these one family that wrestled the, the dad's the coach, he's like, you look like one of the Petrov brothers. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, they're all the kids wrestling their family. And then, uh, I was like, okay. So one day, one of the Petrov brothers brings me a flyer and says like, Hey, this is wrestling. Like you should wrestle too. Like, uh, they're Greek, they were Greek and like, you're Serbian. Like we're like brothers, like Orthodox brothers wrestle. Yeah. And I was like, okay, sure. Like I was like eight. So bring this flyer home. I'm like, I want to try it. And my mom was like, what do you mean? Like you, um, uh, they, they just weren't expecting that from me, I guess. Like, and, uh, but I, I always like wanted to, and I don't know. I just, I just started like getting really good at doing it. Like at a young age, you know, I've, I loved it. I kind of had the right temperament for the sport. Mm. Um, you know, not super aggressive, like I'm pretty chill and like happy off the mat, but when it comes to it, I just kind of like did, took care of business on the mat, I guess. Mm. So you, you know? were like kind of successful from the start, you were saying? Y or? Yeah, yeah, I, I would say like, uh, you know, from like a beginner level, not like amazing sure. or anything, but like I, you could see like, hey, you have a lot of talent, like you can kind of progress up the sport quicker, mm -hmm. you know? So by the time I was 10, like so about two years, I won my first state title in Indiana. Jeez. Oh. So, yeah. like, as a kid, so it reminds uh, me of you, Crosby. Yeah, never you, got that done. <laughs> were you a, kid, you were no. a kitty killer? No. Uh, I I wouldn't say I was like a. I guess I was good, but like, I didn't do like the traditional like you're good. Let's send you to every single national tournament mm. kind of thing. We took it slow. Like my dad learned a lot about the sport. So my dad kind of uh, has always been my coach and someone in my corner. But at first, he didn't know a lot about wrestling. Mm. Okay. So it's like, you're a dad, you get introduced into a sport where you want to help your kid to do what we have a really close relationship. And so he learned a lot about it through, we had one guy, um, that, that taught me, his name was Greg Larson. He was like, he went to Juco at Lassen. Have you heard of that school? It's where like DC went to school in Jamal oh, Kelly. Okay. It was like the top school in the nineties for like their, their lineup could have beaten like D one programs at the Jeez. time. Um, so Greg actually helped me learn a lot about wrestling. He was, I had a high IQ and, um, for the sport and kind of got my dad into understanding it. And then from there, me and my dad, uh, he, he especially was like on YouTube looking at everyone mm. who was good. So I got into John Smith. I got into watching Arsene Fadzaev, Sergey Belaglazov. Um, mm. you know, a lot of these guys who were champs back in Olympic champ, world champions, you know, 
Kenny Monday, Kevin Jackson, all of these guys. And then he started watching a lot of these Russians that were really good because the era when I was a kid, 2004 is when I started. So mm -hmm. from 2004 to 2008, like 10 was like when Russia was just like insane. Mm -hmm. You know, they were, they had so many world champions, you know, Mavel Batira, Buvasar Saitiev, uh, Besik Kudakov, they were just like insane. So some of those guys I like grew up watching and learning a lot about it. My From dad, a young age. From a young age. So wow. I was exposed to freestyle too. My, as a kid's our kids club was only freestyle. Oh, how was that possible? Uh, I don't know. I, where we, we grew up, like, I just, I, I guess, like, it was spring when I started wrestling. Mm. So it, we just kind of always, it was our club was only freestyle. And then, like, I did folk style. About a year later, I started learning folk style. Oh, wow. Isn't that's that nuts? That's, that's insane. Because when I first started, I guess, I didn't even know about, like, freestyle and Greco up until, really? like, mid-middle school. So, like, this is, like, probably, like, you know, six, seven, eight years of, like, wrestling. It's, like, wait, like, there's more styles? Like, this is what the whole world is doing. <laughs> it's just so interesting. Like, like, why did United States just make up folk style and just completely make their own path? Yeah. I don't know. Like, um, it was weird because I had the same kind of thing, but the reverse, like, experience. I was, like, yeah. I was like this. there's, like, a folk style? I was, like, folk style? <laughs> this sounds like some weird, like... I don't know, country, like, sure. sounds, sounds <laughs> yeah, like a sport. dance. Or like something. a dance, yeah, like folklore dancing in Serbia or something. I was like, what is this? <laughs> and so I, yeah. So anyways, um, I, yeah, at a young age, I was exposed to, like, freestyle first and kind of learning that the best were that and kind of I knew what, like, that highest level was of that. Mm -hmm. And then kind of, like, college was so popular, too, that when I did college, I just kind of felt that that was, like, a stepping stone for me to get to where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And, like, you just think, like, hey, if I want to be a world champ, like, I'm probably going to be a, an NCAA champ. At least, like, that's kind of what you think is a progression. Like, you know, if you, you go through your steps, like winning state and going to college, and you if you're good enough and you can handle that, you can be an All-American or an NCAA champ, mm -hmm. and then you kind of can go into freestyle to win medals and hopefully be a world champion, an Olympic champion, you know? Yeah, yeah. that makes it for, for me, I'd say... Uh, it's kind of interesting. I had this conversation before I kind of committed to college. Uh, shout out to Max Askren. But yeah. he was saying, he was like, I was saying that I want to win a, a state title my senior year. And he, he's like, you know, like that, if that's like your biggest mountain to climb, it's kind of hard to focus on that. But if your focus is on to win a college national title, yeah, that high school title might like line up with your goals and yes. you're going to like accomplish that. It kind of makes you think of like, there's going to be higher mountains. So it's like, you of course, hold yourself accountable and, you know, hopefully you can, of course, climb it step by step. Yeah. So it's interesting. And my dad used to always tell me too, like never, because um, going into high school too in Indiana, like was kind of a, a, a nice, like, you know, it was, it was like a lot of pressure too, because Indiana is a one class state too. Mm. And I know like, it doesn't get as much hype as like maybe Illinois does or like Ohio, but Indiana's always like the top are usually really, really good. So it was kind of like winning a state title meant a lot, at least my first one. And I was a three-time state champ, but like I remember going in, it was like my dad was like, hey, listen, like if you don't win a state title at all, like listen, we're just going to get better in the room. And like when you focus on just the growth mindset and growing, like these things will happen, you know? Mm -hmm. It just don't, it's not about like that title, that achievement of like, yeah, like you said, but Max, so that's just a re really good advice is like, I always think you can't look at it. Things just as like that one t total like event in your life is like some huge um, yeah. yeah, mountain or peak to climb. Uh, it makes things blown out of proportion a little bit. Yeah. So T talk more about that growth mindset. Yeah. That you, that you kind of referred to there. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've always kind of had a growth mindset in, uh, in wrestling. Uh, but like I've, I've got, it's gotten a lot better. Um, and you know, one guy that I've talked to a lot is, you know, Matt Gentry, he was a, he was an NCAA Pardon. champ for Stanford and, uh, he was a two-time Olympian for Canada. He took fifth place at the Olympics in London, only losing to Burroughs and Dennis Sargouche. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, that was like the two guys he lost to, to lose a medal to, which was crazy. But, uh, he's someone that I worked a lot of some mental stuff with. He's, he's in the Chicago area. Mm. Um, and Matt is someone we talked about with having like the, the growth mindset and learning, like, listen, you know. You, you're going to fail a lot in life and learning how that you can grow from those failures because most of the things are failures more than the successes, you know, and everybody has a different story. So, uh, putting those two things together, learning, like, listen, what I can, what I can gain from things like, you know, what I'm taking from right and wrong, what I do from success or failure. And I, and I grow, I grow from those failures and learn like, Hey, I can't make those mistakes anymore. I'm growing technically. I'm growing mentally, just mm -hmm. learning to try things and let things, let things fly. Like, loosen up when I go out and wrestle. Mm -hmm. It's not that deep at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. And learning how that, like, I was able to kind of just accept that and be like, hey, get off the mat and lose. Like, nothing's really changed in my life. <laughs> like, yeah. really accept that I, I made it a bigger deal than it was. And um, 
yeah, that, that, that changed my mindset a lot when I started kind of having a little bit less, putting a lot less pressure on myself and learning like, hey, it's more about the journey than it is like that success at the end. Mm. And even after winning a gold medal and accomplishing a goal that I've had my whole life, becoming a world champion, being the best in the world, it was like crazy because I almost remember a lot of like build up to it because that was just such a short little event that it's like I was more like affirmation that you can do mm. it. If that makes sense. Sure. Like manifesting, like you write down on a card or you have yeah, it on yeah. your mirror or something yeah, like that. Exactly. And it's like, you do it. And then it's like, there's life after that. And you're just like, I didn't think about this afterwards. That, you know, That's interesting. <laughs> that is an interesting yeah. point. You don't think about that, but it's a lot. It's all about what leads up to it. And that's like what builds it. And that that's what made me. So, yeah, I got to say this. We have been doing so many online podcasts mm -hmm. that just hearing you just talk in person feels <laughs> so much better. That's true. It does. That's the one thing, like, when we started the podcast, we wanted to do it, like, all in person. But, yeah. like, after, like, traveling, like, all summer, and it's, like, now we got the season here. We've done lots of virtual. Yeah, but... it's been, like, two months of virtual. Oh, yeah. dang. That's yeah, tough. This, this is cool. Yeah, it's way better. I'm at, happy to. At, yeah. <laughs> that's great. I'm a, I'm a talkative guy, too, so that could help as well. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is that an aura ring? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it's what you a, know about that, Caden? <laughs> <laughs> I asked him too because he's like, "It's an ordering." I'm like, "They make gold." Yeah, he's, yeah, 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 yeah I got one too. I, yeah, hey. we we had arguments about which one's better because he has the the whoop band. Yeah, yeah, and of course, I'm not wearing it because it's dead. So. What's oh, your? Yeah. Give me, give me. Your, I want to hear what you think about the whoop because I I don't really know. I just mm -hmm. know that this does such a good job with sleep and yeah. recovery, and I care a little bit more about that end of it than I mm -hmm. would have like a whoop. I feel like maybe it's more dedicated on like the athletic side. Yeah, of it, and. Right? Uh, Definitely, I think looking back, I would have prioritized the aura ring. Looking if it's just, <laughs> I feel so bad. You saying get a that, sponsorship, cause I was, like, no, because we yeah. were talking trash. Yeah, because they were, they were talking <laughs> trash about me for like months on end. But and yeah, I think like looking back, it does have a lot of cool stuff in there with uh, like the attributes of like your heart rate, like what zone you're in at this time. It's so, like when we're doing like um like our preseason runs, it was super cool to see like yeah, yeah, like yeah, how yeah. high your heart rate went during like this run and this yeah. run. It, like it was super cool. But maybe you know. Maybe you can have both too to focus on sleep, but it does. Do you wrestle too. with your son? Um, I kind of take mine off, honestly. Like I, I, I like sometimes I forget or put it on, or like they're just like drill days I put it on, but then like usually like I just take it off because like I don't know. I don't. I guess it, it could help you. Do you wrestle with yours? No, I wrestled with it once and it kind of felt weird and it was like moving around when I started getting sweaty and it, it was yeah. kind of uncomfortable. It, I just felt like it knows anyways by my sleep how I'm recovering without right. the activity. Mm. So like it kind of like your body just is a natural sensor at that. Like it's going to yeah. know you had a hard work rate, like your heart rate's up, like you couldn't fall asleep the same way or you're like restless at night. So I'm like, it really doesn't matter, like, anyways. And plus, it kind of does a weird job of, like, you'd be like, oh, did you, like, you walked up the stairs today? Like, did you go swimming? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I didn't swim today. Yeah. Like, well, like, I didn't even do anything. And it's, like, it, it like, kind of requests you that you do weird exercise right. or, like, things you do. Yeah. So I'm just like, I think it's more built for, like, sleep and then recovery from, mm. like, you get from the day before. And I, I that's all I care about anyways. Yeah. So. Do you do anything to, like, help your sleep? Um. So when I start picking up my training, I actually have a hard time with my central nervous system calming down. So oh, wow. I, I sleep really well always, um, but like sometimes when I start doing two a days, we start doing matches, simulations, and that that like I'm in that first month of like okay, I'm competing in six weeks, and I first start picking up the the intensity. I, my body has a hard time shutting down because it's like you're so tired, but you feel like you're in a war zone. Your body's just like shook, yeah. and it and it has a hard time just like. You know, you're in fight or flight. It doesn't like my central nervous system doesn't calm down. So I've had some different things that I try to do to kind of get in a routine to help me sleep. And this has really helped me because it'll, uh, you know, and then I kind of can give the feedback to my dad and like other, you know, my strength coach. Because when we, we talk about like how we can adjust those workouts accordingly too. Mm -hmm. But I do like, I don't know, things where I try to just simmer down before like bed, like relax a little bit, like an hour or an hour and a half before I go to bed, like putting on certain TV shows. I used to wear blue light blockers. I don't really wear them anymore. It's not really that as much mm -hmm. it is as it is. I just need to like get my mind in like a, a more like Zen state where it's just like, I'm just chill totally. I'm not thinking about the day ahead of me or behind, or in front of me mm -hmm. or, uh, you know. Do you play like uh, music to go to sleep or like rain sounds? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Actually, what I do is I'll use, uh, no, that's nice. I, yeah, I, do, I, I sometimes do like, sometimes. do that like a black screen with rain sounds. Uh huh. You do that? Yeah, I do that. I'm surprised you don't hear it. Sometimes it's really I've loud. I've never heard it. I, Sometimes it is. Really I do loud. like just like I have like the the the, the white noise maker that I use for sleep. Oh. But that's just like in general. But uh, I do. Uh, 
I've used on the Aura Ring, dude. You should try this. There's like the this like part where you hit sleep and or it goes to like this the like noises and stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's like breathing met things that you can do to like calm yourself. And I've seen those. But a, I've never done them. There's some that are like a little too much, but there's one that's like a it's a five minute one. I'll show you after. It's like literally, all you do is it just does a guided breathing for like five minutes, where yeah. you like hold your breath for like four seconds and then you then you hold it or uh, go in for four, hold it for four, and out for like eight seconds, and you do it like. I don't know how many times, like 10 or 12 times. And then it like just gets you, your heart rate calmed down so much. Huh. And then you just stop it. And then you put your sound, your whatever you want and go to sleep. And it helps a lot. I think that's, really? I think it's military breathing. We did that in wrestling mindset, like the, the box. Really? Yeah. I don't remember that. You do more like exhaling, right? Yeah. Uh, I think it was four, 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 four. but I'm, yeah. It's still like rhythmic, right? That. You yeah, have yeah. like a set thing. Yeah. Okay. Such is interesting. Cause you yeah. wear, you wear like those, the oh yeah, I wear things. yeah, I wear the nasal nasal things. It's like a it's like a magnetic, so it's like super sticky. And then I got like this uh, like hard plastic that like stretches your nose. It okay. gets more airway that way. I got a question. My black belt, uh, my uncle was a black belt in jujitsu. He's mm-hmm. always telling me he's like, you got to try the note, the breathe right when you wrestle. He's like, yeah. do it. And I'm like, I've never. I've Where it when like, you wrestle? Yeah, that's what he said. But because he, oh. he's like, apparently, like you could train your nostril, like you can breathe more, but you have to train it. And I'm sure. just like, I don't know, like even if you can do that in wrestling or not. But I was like. I was wondering if you ever wrestled with No, I, I I haven't, but that that's kind of interesting. I know they have those other like things too, like you breathe through it and it's like uh like if you breathe in, there's like super small holes yeah. on the on the ends. So it's like tougher to breathe. And it was like supposedly you're supposed to get more stamina in your like your lungs, but that you can like pull more air yeah. in or whatever. Or yeah, like so like in. I'm not too sure the science behind there, but I think there's options, but wait, would that would that nasal thing even stay on if you wrestled? I don't know. I don't know. It depends which one you get, I think. I don't okay. think mine would. Yeah, right. just I I don't know I I I've got to like mess around with it just in training once, but I know if you do it at first, you're gonna like be burning your lungs, will be burning because oh. you're just taking so much oxygen yeah. in at first. Yeah, like, actually, that's <gasps> interesting. But I think like maybe if you you it, it might help. Maybe I don't know. I don't I kinda know wanna, if they're legal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the UWW they're checking your knee pads. They're like, what's on your nose? <laughs> <laughs> um, I will kind of want to talk about um your like your Serbian descent and kind of why mm-hmm. you're not like. You, representing the United States, just so yeah, everyone can have like a full sure, idea. On sure, that. sure. So, um, like me being Serbian has kind of been something I've grown up with, with my heritage my whole life, you know, um, being around it with the church, being around it with the language, being around it with uh, traditions, food, you know what I mean? Mm. Everything. Like I have a lot of family that live there still. Um, so, you know, I am, I'm very Serbian as part of my identity and like part of, it's very important to me uh, with my culture. But um, with the wrestling side, uh, basically when I was like, after my junior world, uh, I got bronze in 2015, a junior, a junior world. So I was like 19. Um, and, uh, that year, like Serbia had kind of came up to me like, uh, well, I made the cadet team, you know, they, they see my name, me They're like, oh, you're Serbian, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, pretty much was like, you know, you should r- try to wrestle for us and have the opportunity. And just with my love for freestyle, I was like 19. I'm like, of course, like, why would I not want to go to the European championships every year or in the, and the world championships every year? I want to go and do it. And now it's like, okay, you can do it for, the, you can try to make the teams in the U.S. and stuff. But like, this was when I was still wrestling in college. And it was mm-hmm. like, I'm still focusing on like Michigan and like what I want to do for my college career, like ahead of me. And it was just like, I was, it just made sense. Cause I was like, listen, I, this is when I always say, I don't know how it was going to end up for five years down the road or six years down the road, but I was still a junior level athlete, right? Mm. Making this switch. There's no, it's not like I was trying to avoid and change the way what, of what, what I wanted to do. All I cared about was wrestling freestyle at, at, against the best guys. And I wanted to go and travel and train. I wanted to, I, I've been to Dagestan at that age. I had gone to Dagestan. I had gone to, to Turkey. I'd gone to France for different competitions, you know, like as a, as a, at an age group wrestler, you mm. know? So it was something for me. It was like my passion's freestyle. I, I don't really care about the other stuff. And it was like, Hey, if I, I'm going to get the opportunities, if I'm the, if, do I know I'm going to be the best guy even to medal at the in five years, even, you know, five yeah. or six years, let alone be the guy that's going to be the number one representative, which, you know, now I'm a world champion. I'm the best in the world. It's not like I had pre-planned or like thought about how that would go at that age. If that mm-hmm. makes sense, right? Yeah. You're just making the decision. I'm making the decision, having the opportunity to to have that chance at a younger age and do that and, and and be able to get that exposure, which ultimately I felt like has gotten me to be a better wrestler because having these chances of going a lot of these places and gaining the experiences to do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, like, of course, like, uh, people, it's, it's just how it works. And, you know, I'm wrestling for myself, too, at the end of the day. 
Um, it's and it, and yeah, of course, like I understand people wish that I could wrestle for the U S and, and have to go through the same thing as how it goes, but that's just not how, what happened for in my, in my case, in my story, you know what I sure. mean? And for me, representing Serbia is a really awesome thing. And I, I'm so happy that I get to do that for my own heritage and making mm. my family proud and making the people proud of Serbia and be able to also, what I've been able to do being Serbia's first ever freestyle world champion. They have a lot of good Gre Greco world and mm. Olympic champions, but being fr Serbia's first ever freestyle world champion, I've f literally inspired the country to like want to grow in freestyle and be able to change that and, and, and do something in a, in a small country like, in, like Serbia that's been war torn and had a lot of, has a lot of history and a, a, you know, a, a lot of fighting and oppression and a lot of things going on in there in the culture. Uh, it's so cool that I'm able to kind of like be a, a voice, you know, mm. in a country where Olympic sports mean a lot more than even in America. I mean, sure. you know, yeah. so like in the broader scheme of things, it's really cool opportunity what I've been able to do. Yeah, that's so. sick. Just from, you know, and it's not something like I did because of any fear of running away. It's like, mm. man, I want to wrestle the best guys, but I just had that opportunity. Like, you know, yeah, it's just, yeah. When you're like walking like in the streets of Serbia, are you like more, um, I guess, like famous around there, you think? I, I don't know. So, I mean, I, actually, I would say it's about, I would say in the U.S., though, the wrestling community is, is bigger than you think. People mm. always come up to me and say stuff to me here, like sure. surprisingly. And in the U.S., people are like, oh, you, you know, you're Michich. Like, like, oh, Stevan, how are you, you know? But in, in Serbia, I do get a lot of stuff like randomly, too. Mm. You know, people do in the, in the sport or like people are like, oh, I saw you on TV. They'll say to me in Serbian or whatever, like. Uh, I mean, I, I, after Worlds, like I was on literally every TV station, Royal Radio. It sure. was, it was like I did not expect that, but it was, it was pretty cool. Didn't you get like a coin or something in Serbia? No, I, uh, I got an award. Miles Amin got a coin actually oh, for the man. Olympic bronze when he got bronze for San Marino. That yeah. country's so small that they literally put him on their cur a currency there. Is it his face? No way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yes. The He's currency. on like a five dollar euro. Yeah. I think, I think they made like limited things for Miles, but it was so sick. I was like, dude, dude this is way what? too cool. Yeah, that's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, they, wow. I don't think it's like open like publicly for everybody. But like he has like a co I have a I have a Miles Amin coin. That's such that a I could, I could like go to the the like the airport that's and buy insane. like for five euros. For, like, it's, it, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so I mean, one day it's gonna be I can get on a, I can get on a dinar. <laughs> Dude, I, I just can't fathom that. That's like unbelievable. Uh -huh. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's up? What's the craziest way you've heard somebody pronounce your name? Uh, <laughs> I don't really like Steven very much. So I just like, if people say Stevan or Stefan, it's better than like Steven. So it's like just my name's Stevan. But Michic is, is a crazy one. So it's really easy to say Michic, okay? Because mm -hmm. it's like the C's just are, have the little ch on them. They just don't sure. have it in English like that. So that's how you pronounce my name is Michic. Um, but I think one time my dad was trying to tell someone, they're like, oh, so like, they're like, just say each, each twice. And they're like, oh, it's, it's easy. It's Masisis. And I was like, no, no, come on. It's not that hard. Let's go. Come on. Oh my gosh. That's on funny. Matt B, Steven Mysick. <laughs> no, no I, it's, it's actually good. It's, it's good now. We're, we're cool. That's okay. good. That's Don't good. Worry. At our uh, recent duel, there was this broadcaster that was giving our whole team crap. And oh my goodness. He, he pronounced everyone's name wrong, but he was calling me Hensel instead of Henschel and uh, uh, War Warchel instead of like Warcheck and all these. It was something. Our, our 74 pounder wrestled three way classes. Yep, yep. <laughs> same <laughs> he just kept saying same the names. Name. Yeah. Yeah. He just kept coming yeah. up, but that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I was actually doing some research in your past college matches. Okay. And I, I was watching you versus Seth Gross. Yeah. And in that match, if you use the new three point takedown, you would have won that match. <laughs> yes. I, we've actually talked about this. Have you? <laughs> yeah, we had. That's a crazy match. Did you like count out the takedown? Yeah. And I was points? like, wait a second. Is this like, cause like I never really looked back on a match and be like, oh wait, this overturned, especially in a big match like that. It's interesting. Yeah. Even though it's, it was a couple yeah. years away, but yeah. it just, I guess so that was that was a crazy match. Like I, uh, you know, Seth was a really good competitor. I like think him is his style um, with being lanky. Mm -hmm. It's like was kind of probably what you felt with me. Like we're yeah. both we're both like really lanky and tall for the we we're tall for thirty three, and uh, even for fifty seven kilos, both of us making the weight, you know, and stuff. And uh, I just remember that match. I was like ninety nine percent ready to win. The only position I wasn't ready to win was 
if I gave up a takedown, like not giving up a wrist. And I mm-hmm. literally fought that so hard. I should have just given a takedown and just tried to start from scratch and escape. Mm-hmm. But he literally like be fighting and getting stubborn to defend it. He like just caught a wrist and jumped on a near wrist. And then I got turned and went down six zero. Mm-hmm. But like, I just remember after the match, it was just like, I got in my zone. I was just prepared on my feet, how to finish, how to, how to, how to, you know, we were prepared for the, for, for my neutral game. And it was just like, People were like, forgot, like after the NCAA tournament, they were congratulating me. Like, congrats, man. That was awesome. I was like, oh, they're, oh yeah, you ended up losing. Like, <laughs> oh, because I just like, they, they forgot sad. how yeah, the way get, that it was like yeah. a takedown clinic at the end. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. he just was kind of like in shutdown mode. And I was just like, go, 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 go. Oh. So I, it was like, it was kind of a hard pill to swallow because of like how close it was to that situation. But dude, the new three point rules, man, that would have really benefited me because of how good I was on neutral compared to like as a more of a, folk style, you know, wrestling. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. How how close do you, uh, I how, guess, watch uh, the, like these this folk style season, especially guys in your weight and like the guys at USA that, you know, well, could. I'm, yeah, you know, I've, I've like wa- paid attention to it more than I would say like watched, like I've like been more like attentive to the duels. Like I've watched my, my Michigan guys wrestle mm-hmm. more than I have. And maybe a couple big matches and seen a little bit of highlights here and there, but I haven't been like really like, like shut down, like sit down, let's watch. Uh, let's, I'm not really like watch duel like that anyways, because, I don't know, like when you go through the season, you you always are like, you kind of get numb to the fact of like sitting down. So I'm kind of like on that, like, I need a little time away <laughs> like, sure. to kind of just like recoup. But like, well, of course, nationals, big tens, like that's a different story, you mm-hmm. know? But um, I don't know. I think like, it's been tough to really look at like that. What do you guys think about it? You're wrestling it. What do you think about the three point? Oh yeah, oh, I, I love yeah, the three point. It's way take better. Down. Is yeah. it? Yeah, way I better. I can finally like major people in tech fall people <laughs> no more decisions. But. Yeah, how does it feel? Like just two takedowns, you're up six one, right? Yeah, it, it's interesting because uh, it was funny because I was seeing uh, uh, Flo was posting like Shane Sparks was saying how the three point takedowns like so bad it's gonna ruin wrestling. But then uh, recently he says I love the three point takedown completely switched. But I think I think more points is better for wrestling. Yeah. Um, well, it just, I just think that, uh, you know, with free, with, I mean, I'm a, I'm a pro freestyle guy, so like, you know, not to, you know, but, but like, I like that you're able, like in freestyle, you get two mm-hmm. and then you, you're back on your feet and it's two zero. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think like having the three pointers and then they getting an escape, it's like, you still work for that's the true. point and you can still work for a reversal. That's two, All right. but like giving, giving the, like to still have a two point lead yeah. from the takedown is, is a lot, you know, that's yeah. fair. I think then. Than having like having that gap from a takedown, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, that, I, I like I like that. That's why I like the three point takedowns because like you're that way. You're not you're not taking away. A, um, you know you're still rewarding the escape and you're still rewarding someone trying to escape off bottom. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I think that I think that's like definitely going to help the sport going forward. There's a little bit of time at least where I thought we should uh, put the three point takedown in high school until we talked to your grandpa about it. Oh yeah. And he said how, oh, because like, yeah, it's still two points in high school, right? Mm-hmm. So but it, it would like make the younger guy or the the newer guys of the sport in high school. It would like give them no chance. Yeah, basically that's true. Yeah. So it's interesting to like think about. Like, of course, those because the high schoolers these days. I mean, like, are how just many takedown so, let them up do you see in high school? It's just like yeah, well, you yeah. Just, like spin around yeah. kids like well, this, and yeah. it's a tech fall. I mean, I, I was at my brother's senior night, and um, at, at our high school, <laughs> our past high school, there's East and West. It's two high schools in one school, so their senior night was versus each other. <laughs> they, should, they should, they should, really. That sounds com- like a movie. <laughs> <laughs> basically, is with like homecoming like for high football, school musical wrestling edition. It, li- <laughs> it's like East versus it, West. it literally <laughs> is. But I mean, going back to just like the dominance of some high schoolers, it's like the mirror solos go there. So if you know Cole and Connor, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like there's just no chance that anyone, of course, can beat them. But of course, it's like, yeah, you know, going back to that, um, it probably should be a two point takedown. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, it would be nice for them, though, because then they less time on the mat, I guess. Yeah, um. I guess. <laughs> what What are your thoughts about like those younger guys, like being so good at they are as they are now? Um, yeah, I think like the level is increasing and stuff like that. But like there's I think it's cool that the young kids are like being able to be exposed. But like. No matter, just to always keep a, a you know like a level head on it. Like nothing, it, it's all still gonna, you know. They're still they have to, uh, you know, face the test of time with like going into college, mm. change and seeing how you know because I think that like they're jumping and growing quicker, and uh, you know if they can keep on that pace when you know they when things change up. I mean pace uh, pace of 
growth, not like pace of speed. Like, you know, if they mm-hmm. can keep improving, improving, that's going to really ultimately help wrestling in, in America. You know, yeah. it's just what happens. Like when someone goes to college, everybody's path's different. You know, are they going to make the improvements they need to do? Are they going to like kind of be stuck where they're doing it? Or like, or is their style kind of being something that's like, maybe they're more physically mature for like their age and the way that they wrestle is a lot more like, when they wrestle someone who knows how to hold position a lot better and like they face a, someone's more like you know they meet maturity mm-hmm. of like someone in college it, it might not be working it really is, it's all subjective to how someone's wrestling i think but i think in general it's a good sign right mm-hmm. like in and in, in for the growth of wrestling like like um high school that the fact that you're seeing these guys come out yeah you know one question for you who do yeah. you think will represent united states at 57 kilos that's a really good question um you know, obviously that's something that like it's important because no matter who it is, it's like you always have to, I'm always have to be prepared for whoever the American guy is because, you know, it's you know, it's the US guy and um but I think I think it's gonna be probably Gilman mm. because I think Gilman is the most tested. He's the most uh, he's like the vet at the weight class. Mm-hmm. Yes, he maybe had a sl- maybe for him it's a slip up at, at fifty seven, but knowing how mentally tough he is as well, I think, you know, making a run at this, um, being ready and doing the things he needs to do. Um, you know, I think also, I think Gilman has the best chance of, uh, making a dent and, in, and in, into, into any of the world, the, the bracket in my weight class, you mm. know, for like the, 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 top guys when I think it's, uh, but we'll see if, if Vito can make the descent. I think Vito is also the next contender. If Vito can, can make oh. 57 and be the guy, uh, you know, I think, I think those are the two, the two best sh- chances. That weight is crazy. Yeah, it is. Personally, I think that those are the, t- your, t- your two guys. I think that it just depends you know, fix is also can be a tough freestyler as well. Mm. Um, those, those are my, but I, th- I think it's going to be Gilman and Vito. It's just, if Vito can be Vito, like, like he's been, mm. then I would maybe go with him. But if it's, I just understand because I make the weight cut as well. And lo- I, I'm kind of fortunate to be doing it once a year now and, and kind of keeping the strength. But, you know, Vito's in a college season right now. He's, he's at 133. He, he's been competing there. Um, mm. I know he's not his favorite to, to make down, go down and then go into the trials. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just think, you know, with Gilman kind of being that, having that, uh, you know, probably overall, you know, most well-rounded wrestler as mm. well at the weight class, mm. um, ha- has has the, the, the hardware to back up. You know what I'm saying? Sure, that makes sense. Uh, and, and just because of one, like, okay, yeah, he, he wrestled only one time. He didn't have any other tournaments last year. Wrestled Zane and lost, oh, when, oh, uh, you know, lost the, both matches right away in c- kind of in a fluke fashion, right? Mm. Then he looked like himself. It's kind of like an outlier a little bit to sure. be like, oh, he's going to be like that now for the rest of the year. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, true. it's just too much to knowing how he is as a competitor and knowing like I, I, I want to wrestle him in the Olympic finals too. You know, I want to wrestle whoever. Like, that's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you wouldn't include Spencer in there? I, I think, uh, I think Spencer like is. I, I like Spencer as a good kid. I, I think Spencer's tough. I just don't know if Spencer's, Spencer's battle tested enough mm. to be like the guy. Like the the, the weight class is deep, mm. and uh, if if you know, like I know Nico is a big win for him, but I don't know if Nico is going to be the guy who's. Uh, uh, I don't know, like how hard Nico's been training. Like, is he full time? I know Nico works a, like works a job, and he's just been showing up <laughs> wrestling. You know, he's he's yeah. he's been out of the picture. Um, but when you have a guy like Gilman, Vito, Dayton Fix, Suriano. Uh, you know what I mean? Zane, yeah. Zane Richards yeah. Dude, and Zane's I, wrestling great. I mean, if he's he's not going to tech fall those guys in the first. So I mean, if mm. if he can if he can withstand, I mean, Spencer technically can be the guy. It's just I don't know. There's not enough data points to right. to say, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. he's I've been in the college scene for so long. It's hard. So right. I think if, of course, I'm not I'm not counting sure. him out. I think I'd love to have Spencer as my as a competitor too. Yeah. I'd love to wrestle him, but it's it's just how. Uh, how I think it's going to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just yeah. from like how we see things as, as a competitor, someone in the, uh, that competes at the, the, the highest level right now. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. What about you guys? I mean, I was going to, I always got to ride with Spencer, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> but, I mean, you, that makes so much that, sense. Yeah, it, you it, say it, that. it makes a lot more sense coming from you. Just seeing how that plays out because you like wrestled at that level and you yeah. know more than us. And it's easy to see, of course, these quick matches and stuff like this to uh, kind of hop on like the bandwagon. Some would say, of course. Uh, especially, you know, if, like if he's the guy, you know, supporting like that, the, you know, Rudis, of course. of course, like posting him all the time and doing all their yeah, guys. Yeah, I like Spencer and I think yeah. he has a great chance. I'm not, don't not sure. to take that out of context. Right. I was, I was saying. just wondering, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like kind of what you thought because it's it's, it's just going to be tough. I mean, uh, you, but to be honest, it's the tr- Olympic trials. It can be anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, could be Nick. Could be you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I like I'm not one to say either. It's just how I think 
it could it could go. Yeah. What do you think is the best wrestling skill to develop? Um, I think learning how to hold position and being more of a defensive wrestler. As much as I am like an offensive wrestler, I think that's like the way that you can. And then learning how to take, like learning that having one or two shots that you're really good at doing, I think they can get you further like earlier in your mm -hmm. career. And like not earlier, but just learning how to be an overall better wrestler. And like, cause you, you're in, gonna be wrestling more positions. Not saying you wanna let one into your leg, but learning how to be more just a positionally sound wrestler, mm -hmm. um, you know? Yeah. Because like eventually if you have a lot of offense and then the skill gap, the skill level gets higher, 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 your chances of finding an att leg attack is a lot harder. You need to have like a, an A shot, you know? Mm -hmm. I think it like in general, you need to be like at the top, you need to have, um, I think this is, most people would say, you need to have an attack to both legs, one, one mm -hmm. to each side. One of them needs to be an, a go-to. Like one of them needs to be an A, an A level shot. And then you have to have solid leg defense and be able to not get scored on on your, you have to be able to have good um, shot recovery and then you have to have solid leg defense and you can, you can, be a very, very, very high level wrestler. Yeah, I, and guys, if you guys do not know, I was wrestling with him <laughs> and, and some goes, and the defense was insane. Like holding his leg up, like, and he's lighter than me. It was the, the leg felt like a hundred pounds. So we I know exactly what he's talking that, about. Though. We were yeah. just speaking like you. Well, I've learned to like use my body to be heavy and learn how to use my body to mm -hmm. be, um, you know, like. I'm not one that's I you could have like powerful hips and legs. Like I have chicken legs. Like sure. my legs are literally like pencils. So if I sprawl back straight and guys can pick run up and pick up my leg, it's not great for me, you yeah. know, being like shelved in the air. But learning how to use my body to become heavier and learn how to position myself and, and move my opponent, uh, that's that's gonna help me in the long run and make things and then like I said, I, I think it's better like end game for me where it's a lot harder to finish me because if I learn how to use my body it's, you know, there's a lot more elements than just being like, okay, legs back. And then after that, it's like, there's so many layers that they have to wrestle through me because I'm, I can kind of keep moving and maneuvering my body. Mm. So I think for me being the length, length, I think seeing success, I think guys that do have that kind of lanky, skinny body have always kind of like, they do very, very well. Like if I have, I'm built kind of like Sadakov a little bit, you know, mm, Sidakov sure. or like, I would say have various, I mean, he's like lanky, he's kind of unassuming. Like this guy's the guy that's taken, taken down burrows, sure. you know, but um, I just think for the style, being tall, having the reach, being able to get in, knows how to recover, has an A shot, mm -hmm. knows how to hold position and defend, yeah. win scrambles, you know? Yeah. Yeah, dude, you seem huge for that weight class. Now that I'm thinking well, about I'm it. Well, I'm not small for it. I'll tell you yeah. that. Dude. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I, have to, I have to cut a lot. But I mean, I, I've made the weight for since 2018. I've made it every single year up till now. You know what I mean? Um, I'm just doing it less now. And uh it was, it's, it's been a, it's been a toll on my body and, uh, you know, I had contemplated on going up to 65 and that's just too hard to do because now that's another element of having power and having a lot more. I have to weigh more. I have to put on like another, you know, eight to 10 pounds, I would say to get and, and learn how to control my body for that extra mm. oomph, you know, yeah. when a guy, you know, um, yeah. you know, the hardest thing I would say is like, let's just say you're wrestling, right. And you get on a leg, you know, like when a guy kind of sprawls, you can kind of like recover yeah, right yeah when i would wrestle at 40 when i jumped up and kind of what the hardest thing to do was i i, I probably wasn't like the proper shape to go up uh right away at to up 20 pounds after the olympics like five yeah. months later that was probably not a smart move on my end but the hardest thing was like getting used to taking a shot and then when guys were just kind of like my fingertips i mm. couldn't recover they would just start running the corner i'm like what the heck yeah. they're just so much heavier than me yeah. and they would just hit corner and i'm like this is not what i'm used to doing it was like you know i'm gonna need some time after the olympic games to Cause I'm, I'm planning on going up. I don't know if I want to take a year at 61 or, you know, then move up to 65 and then for the next cycle or how I want to do it. But, um, you know, this was such a short cycle. I was like, I can do 57 mm -hmm. again. If I do it once a year, um, plan it right. And, you know, I have experience making the weight. I know how to cut weight, how to make the weight cut properly, how to diet right and, and get everything to a T it's just not doing it too much. And I also, I've heard things on like a lot of guys, like I know Gilman had problems with that too, where he was. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a lot of these guys coming down, it's that are bigger that it's have a hard time making, getting down to 57, yeah. trying to like, be like, oh, if I train here at all, all, all time, it's, it, it's just not good for you. And you're, and it's like, you're putting wrestling second to your weight yeah. cut too. You're hurting your body. It's just like, Hey, let me, let's, let's do this proper. Let's, let's focus on wrestling. Let's get better in the sport. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on how I can win the gold. And then when weight cut comes to weight cut and we have to get it down, we, we do that later Yeah, and we, we do it when we have to do it. So yeah. I am in a, I am in a unique situation where I don't have to go through the 
the gauntlet right now. Yeah. And I did do my, I did what I had to do at the, at the world championships to qualify. So, um, you know, that was a, that was one thing we were like, Hey, you know, if I don't get an Olympic, if I don't medal or like, like I don't take the top five, like I'm going to, you know, have to make weight at the Euro qualifiers, which is going to be t- super tough. I mean, mm. that's one thing I would say that the U S has the advantage of. It's like, okay, you do have to make the Olympic trials, but you qualify. It's like, you should have the, the bid. Sure. You know what I mean? Through Pan Am's. Yeah. But if you don't do it through three worlds for me, it's like it's a grind. It's a grind, man. Like going to no, I don't want to go to Europe if I don't have to and make the stretch. Like that's, you know, mm. so many good wrestlers. Yeah. So. Wait, so where do you walk around at right now? Uh, I weigh like 43, 44. So I'm not like uh, I mean still though. Uh, it's it's yeah. the thing is it's not like like that heavy. Like I get under one forty when I start cutting weight. I'm like around thirty eight, thirty seven. Okay. But uh, I just don't hold that much fat anyways. So that's kind of the thing is where I just can't sit at thir- I can't be 10 over like you know yeah um I weigh what I weigh when I was wrestling 133 like if that makes sense yeah like you know so when you went 41 you were just pretty much showing cutting, up to the weigh-in showing up to weigh-in it's so like I would what I would do is like I would try to eat more and I would try to like I would take creatine take all my like <laughs> I would take and then I would like do like a work a cut like a weight cut to do like two pounds or three but it was like that was because that was my max weight it wasn't oh. like I was three over and had to like had cotton mouth no it was like I ate food and then I just was doing that just so I felt better at the duel yeah, yeah. that makes sense like I was like I just was trying to maximize and be like oh, I'll just like cut off I'll just put on sweats and like lose two pounds yeah. so it was like that yeah. was like That'd be a good was, feeling to have before yeah. Cutting weight, just yeah, but but it was a struggle because yeah. also going in and not wrestle. I would I did that Olympic red shirt and then COVID red shirt year, so I didn't wrestle at all in, in folk style. So going from that and then jumping up was a very hard thing because if you think about it, like wrapping your head up, like okay, I got to come aggressive today, and then you know you're moving too much. They're just like a little, they're like a little brick house, and you can't move them, and all of a sudden you're doing too much. You know, there was that route. Then it was like, it was like, you, I know my balance on a scale, but I felt at 41 when I jumped up, I was sitting on both ends of the scale. It was like, mm. do too much, it would like go against me. Not do, not do enough, I, I didn't do enough to score. Oh, yeah. You know, there, I didn't know how to wear my guy down. I didn't know how to be efficient enough. And it was something I needed to grow into, if mm. that makes sense. Like I go in and grab the guy, I'm like, I'm way better than you. And then it would just be like, how did you just beat me? Like I just got, sure. you know, got up, gave up a reversal, got ridden out and then gave up a stupid takedown because I, I tried to be aggressive and do something I would do to a guy my size. And, you know, yeah. it was just kind of like a really weird year that I think I had to look at it and be like, that had nothing, that did not uh, define me as a wrestler. And that had nothing to do with how I am as a wrestler. It actually just made me stronger in the end. Cause it was like, I, I don't, I'm not afraid to lose anymore. I don't care. Mm. I'm going to go in and scrap and wrestle as hard as I can. And my effort level was, and when I came in and won my first, my bronze medal, my first year in, I was like, now I got my confidence back. I finally won my first medal. Let's go and win gold next year. You know what I mean? And it was like, I felt like I learned a lot. Even, even as much as that sucked, not all American, losing in the blood round in overtime, mm. you know, having terrible losses to guys that I, I believe I should never have. But, you know, I was up to almost, you know, 20 pound different win and weight class that I shouldn't have been. And, and to be honest, to do that, I took a lot of heart and, I, I, I grew as a person because I came out mentally stronger, mm. you know, don't recommend it for like people to just <laughs> yeah. do that though. <laughs> I just wrestled up two weight classes. Oh, wow. Yeah. You did. He's a How 74 wrestled 97. Yeah, I'm a 74. I weighed in at 182.0 and wrestled 197 and I, uh, I got pancaked in a minute. Wow. And pinned. Yeah. yeah. He felt, he felt really strong. I can't lie. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I gave a lot of credit when Miles, I mean, wrestled 97 that one year. Yeah. Um, that was like during the COVID year. Mm. That was, I don't even know how he did that, but I mean, he's just, a, he, you know, the, the, the strength that he has to be able to go up and do that. But I mean, he was, he doesn't cut for 86 or any 86 kilos, mm-hmm. but like, it just like him just to, hey, he had to put on a lot of size, like the amount of food that he was eating and stuff. And I was like, ah, dude, I can only imagine what it's like yeah. going up against those big dudes. True. Yeah. One match that I kind of want to bring up and get your whole take on it yeah. was when uh, DeSanto tried to break your arm. <laughs> yeah, I knew that was going to come <laughs> up, though. Um, Walk me through that. Okay, so DeSanto, I think, is somebody you have to have a lot of respect for as a wrestler because he does something so, so good. You know, he comes in with his inside tie, and he's literally, if you ask anyone who's wrestled him, he's peeling the skin off of your hand. He's pinching in, like, so tight. And, like, he wears tape on his hands, so your whole arm after the match is just a big rash and rug burn. Oh. So he's so good at that positioning. And I think if you're not in the right mindset um, 
to wrestle him and just kind of think you can overlook it, he will punish you with fireman's carry. And that's, you know, he's so strong. It's like freakishly strong. Mm. And I remember, um, I'll start from that, the, that year, 2018, I wrestled the Cliff Keen with my first tournament back in the competition. Um, and I wrestled, I lost to, to Pletcher, um, the Cliff Keen tournament in kind of a crazy match. He's real, Fletcher was super clutch and he beat me. And I was so upset, like, because I made a dumb decision, probably should have went into overtime and just won the match conservatively. I tried to rush it. You know, he was smart. He, he, he played the, the folk style game, you know, uh, beat me. And, I, and I, I wanted to be done with the tournament. And I'm just like kind of pouting a little bit. I was young and my first, you know, was my, I was a sophomore. I was like pouting up. And then like, and 10 minutes later, it was like on deck. And I just see this Drexel kid, this spaz, just like hitting his arm, slapping his face, like, like, ah, like screaming and stuff. And I was like, oh boy, I got to wrestle this kid. I go out there and the dude just firemans me, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I almost get tech falled and literally like it was the most embarrassing thing in my, in my rest, like probably up to date. That was probably the most embarrassing wow. thing that happened to me. And I remember just being like, like crying, like being so, so, so upset. And, you know, coming into the dual season, you know, my conditioning was in shape. I, I had the right mindset. You know, I fixed a lot of the stuff that I had to get, you know, that I put that behind me and was just locked in. I think I went on a, on a crazy spree during my Big Ten season. I had a major at everybody through my Big Ten season going into the Big Ten tournament. The Nationals, I wrestled him in, in, the, in the quarters, and I was just so ready to wrestle him. And I think, like, in his head, was not expecting me to just be kind of, like, locked in. Mm. And I just beat him, just, like, kicked his butt. Uh, it, I think I was winning 12-1. Took him down, took him to the Turk, and he was just mentally, like, you know, like, I put him in a Turk on his back. He just was like flustered. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of just like, I don't know what happened, but like he was just getting angry. Like he was pulling my headgear off and shoving me. And I was just like, dude, getting what? cartwheels, dude. And then all of a sudden, like at the break, he just does a cartwheel and, <laughs> and tries to break my arm. And like, I was just like, dude, how was the referee not like disqualified? <laughs> it went on right? for a while. Yeah. It like, went on way too long. And I mean, it was really bad. Like it was a bad form. More like it did not hurt my arm. I was just kind of like mm. sticking it out. Like I was like, "What is he doing to me?" Mm. I'm like, "Count." I'm like, "Just referee, count the back points at this point." Because <laughs> like I could not believe he did. The referee didn't call anything. He was just kind of like in stun. And afterwards, like, man, I'm so sorry for not blowing the whistle like for you. The referee came up mm. to me and apologized. He was like, hey, "It's okay." Like I don't know what that was, but yeah, I don't know how. Like, you know, and I don't I know nothing against him or anything. It was such a long time ago, but mm -hmm. I still think that that moment will will go down as one of the craziest college wrestling moments in oh all time because yeah, that's no true. one ever like for that. And also that being like a quarterfinals match, which wasn't like you know it wasn't like on the on the main mat in, the, mm. in my finals or even the semifinals where they cut it. It was like the quarterfinals, and for right. that to happen, right? Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess talking more about like just injuries, going back to the, yeah. uh, your finals match yeah. with Gross, you kind of hyperextended your elbow on a shuck there. Yeah. How, how much did that affect your match? Uh, it didn't really affect my match after that. I just remember I had to like let him, I, I just gave him a free, I didn't realize me calling a, a time injury time. I just wanted to like give myself some time to recoup, to be honest, because mm -hmm. it, 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 it did hyperextend my elbow, but um, I just wanted to give my time, some time to recoup, and then I gave him a free point. I was like, damn. Mm. But no, it was actually okay. Like nothing crazy that that tournament. I I did, I was okay. Mm -hmm. Just I learned a little bit about how to, you know, he had like my wrist, and usually guys grab my elbow, so it worked. So he, when he grabbed my wrist, it like yeah. hyperextended. Sure. So nothing too too crazy. There. Uh, what what would you say to like uh, people that are in wrestling right now that are hurt? They're like maybe getting over an injury, or you know, they're still they can't wrestle the rest of the year. Yeah. What would be some I guess words of encouragement for them? Uh, you know, for the next year. Or, however you see that uh words of encouragement i would say uh for like anyone going forward um you know i think like if you really love the sport of wrestling and you really want to get better and improve um you can do it you know i think it's um it, anyone can it's just it's it takes commitment it takes sacrifice and there's a lot of things that maybe in high school that you you might have to miss doing you know mm -hmm. i remember my high school uh and middle school like um life wasn't normal for a, a lot of you know, normal kids were, were doing even sports, like, you know, wrestlers, I, I missed a lot of things, you know, I didn't go, I didn't go to many like friends houses or like go to parties and stuff like that in high school. Uh, I missed, I missed out on a lot just to sacrifice because I cared about my wrestling career and I wanted to make those differences. Like those summers, you know, people always want to, they get so excited about the wrestling season. And then when the season's over, it's like, I can't wait for next year. I can't wait to jump right in the off season. And then, 
you know, they aren't putting that work in in, in that in the uh, the off season in the summertime. And it's like that is such a big time where you can go and you can find people to work with. There's so many resources, so many coaches to get privates from. You know, focus on making your wrestling better. Go and, um, you know, find seeking out, uh, you know, places to go, even if you have to drive an hour or whatever it is mm-hmm. to go catch a ride with somebody, stay, at, you know, you know, focusing, if you want to get better at wrestling, like, you know, you know, you're 135 pounder. What are you doing playing football? You know, like I never understood <laughs> that. Like I want to play football, but I also love wrestling. And it's like, dude, like, like, come on. Like I get it. You love football. Like you, you go play football with your friends on the weekends or something. But like, what, like if you really care about getting better, like focus on wrestling. Mm-hmm. Like that's what you, if that's your passion and that's your goal you know, focus on it and, and spend the time to do it because it's not an easy thing to do. It's a commitment and, uh, but it's worth it. You know, like the, the things that I've been able to do, like I'm blessed. I thank God every day because uh, I feel like wrestling's uh, given me so many opportunities to do things with my life in the long run, you know, and it may, it might not seem easy right now. There's things that I used to be really get hard on myself for missing things and thinking whatever, but for the things I get to do and travel the world and accomplish the things, like I wouldn't trade that in for anything. So, um, you know, and anyone can do it. So I like that. How, how has God played a role in your life? You know, I'm, I'm a religious guy. You know, I grew up, I'm, I'm a Serbian Orthodox. So I'm Orthodox Christian, like, you know, going to church, being an altar boy, uh, you know, mm-hmm. going to Serbian school and then, and, uh, you know, be having a good relationship through my, with my family, uh, th- you know, through God and, uh, you know, having that, uh, relationship praying. And, um, you know, I think that's been one of the main things that like, no matter what, that's number one, um, you gotta, you gotta put that first and, uh, put, put like, and one of the things with God is like learning, like to be patient with, with what God wants for you in your life. Because mm-hmm. for me, you know, I, I, I looked up to like Henry Cejudo, who's, who was the youngest Olympic gold medalist, you know, and th- think like, Hey, I can do that too. But learning that my path, like I wasn't m- mentally, physically, technically mature enough to do the stuff that I did at 21 was, I didn't get to be an NCAA champion. I want, I wanted to be an NCAA champion. I won big tens. I was a three-time All-American. I didn't win. And I know this sounds maybe a little bit like, I don't want to come off like, Hey, I'm accomplishing high level things, but this applies to anyone at, at, at any level of, of things. Like when you're really close to doing something and you might not do it or, or have some tragedy that happens in your life, you know, um, there are things that happen to you that might not be, but you can't just shy away from God's love, you know, mm-hmm. and, and being able to accept whatever it is and be thankful for that, 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 you know, for like what you can have from that and what you can learn from that and how, going forward. So I think my, my perseverance and, and, and my faith and my patience with God and my relationship to, with Jesus, I think that's like helped me um, you know, win this gold medal and become a world champion because I've, I've, I've had to go through a lot and say like, listen, you know, I actually talked with Jordan Burroughs last, a few weeks ago, actually, I was out in Philadelphia and I think what he, one of the things he told me, um, you know, not off religion. I know he's a, he's a God, a uh, godly man, but like going off of like what he told me was like, Stevan, would you have like, when you were 17 saying like, you would be a world champion now, but like, would you be okay with like the path? Like if you didn't have like the success in college that you wanted or like, if you, but you knew that you were going to be a world champion in 10 years, would you be happy with that? I'd be like, yes, like, of course <laughs> I would be happy with it. But like sometimes in your life, you, you want things right away. You want to have this success and you see you're good at something. You know, I've always mm-hmm. been the guy that's been second, third, second, third, bronze, silver, you know, mm-hmm. and to be like, I'm the best right now. And I believe in myself and have that confidence. It's it's well past it's, you know, I, I, it's just been so, so rewarding to me and I, I couldn't be more thankful to God for that, mm, you know, that's giving awesome. me the opportunity. Yeah. yeah, that is cool. And I guess the last thing I do want to touch base on is with, with the Olympics coming up, mm-hmm. you know, last Olympics I heard uh, with your podcast with flow is like you had mono that, yes. that basically that whole thing. So I feel like, like for you, you got to be so dialed in mm-hmm. for this next cycle that yes. I, I'm so excited to see you. Thank you, man. I think, I think one of the things for me is, uh, is I'm super dialed and I have a fire burning for this, but I've said it before. Like, I think I'm a lot more calm going into it, like a lot less pressure Mm. because there was a lot of unknowns going into Tokyo, right? You know, um, I'd taken fifth at the, at the world championships. I lost him for bronze the year before, but I qualified. So I hadn't had a world medal yet. Um, I can't go into the Olympics ranked as the, I I was, uh, number three. I, I, I won the tournament in Poland, the, the ranking series and moved to number one. So I was the number one seed going in, but like really without the results, really not knowing what an Olympic games is like, um, trying to be so disciplined on my weight, which was a, you know, like I was cutting a lot. I'm a big 57 kilo guy and uh, worrying so much about that, trying to put myself in the best situation possible and just seeing that how I can still be sick and, 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 and something just go terribly wrong. Right. And, and knowing like, Hey, you still have to be focused and you still have to, um, be lasered in and do the right things every day. 
But from a mindset perspective, um, yeah, I'm hungrier than ever. Like I, I cannot wait for this Olympic games to go, to go and do my very, very best. And, uh, you know, going in it, I, I actually have a lot of confidence from the worlds to be like, now I have results to show for, to speak mm. for themselves. And I have the confidence as, as, as the world champion and going into being like, look, I'm going to be a better form of myself. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a better form. I'm going to be a different form. And I can't wait to go and wrestle the same guys or, or anyone new. I can't wait. Like, yeah. give me the American guy. Like I'm going to go beat him. Like, give me the, give me the rush. Give me Uguiev again. Give me, I cannot wait to be the, a new form of myself, like a better level. Like, you know, I'm a new form, you know? Mm. And, uh. I, I'm gear five Luffy, you know, like <laughs> in one piece uh, for anyone who gets that. But like, I can't wait to be the new form of myself. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's just like I, it, the fire is burning, the passion's burning, but um, I'm a lot more like level-headed and calm and know what to expect. And I, I just, I'm not like, I don't feel as phased. So if that mm. makes sense, because I know like things might not go the way that they, and I'm expecting if things don't go the way, I can handle that. If mm. that makes sense. Yeah. Because you can't go in so uptight and so like freaked out. Right. And everyone that I've talked to, you know, uh, one of my t- uh, my Serbian teammate Zura uh, Dunatasvili, he was for, uh, he's a Georgian, but he competes for Serbia. He's um, a, a two time world champion in Greco, Olympic bronze medalist in Tokyo. And in Tokyo, it was his first time competing um, for Ser- for Serbia, but he, it was his third Olympic Games. Mm. And he told me he's like my first two Olympic Games. First one, I was so uptight, nervous. Second one, I was so uptight. And third one, he's like, I just came in calm, relaxed. I knew, hey, listen, like, I'm going to have fun. This probably might be my last Olympic game or whatever, but like, you know, going in, like he put a lot less, uh, you know, pressure on himself and he won a bronze. And it was just for, even from hearing that angle, it's like the dude went through three Olympic games Yeah, and it's like, you know, some people may never, might only ever do one is a crazy feat, but three and to understand like how you change, you mature mentally as you get older and learning about yourself and learning about the sport, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's crazy. So I feel like I'm in my prime right now. I'm going into my prime. So I'm excited to, you know, and, you know, God willing, everything goes well, stay healthy, stay focused, stay motivated and not let anything in and just give it my all and just improve where I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And, uh, and I believe I'm going to win. So That's awesome. Sweet. Can you speak Serbian? I can. I can Fluently? Speak Serbian. Uh, I'm close to fluent. So I didn't learn as a kid because my mother's American, but um, I learned a lot. Like gr- I learned a lot growing up. And then I officially, I took classes at Michigan actually, two years of it. Oh, wow. And then uh, I, I still do tutors like twice a week right now just because I need to do good when I'm, I'm speaking with people and, mm. you know. Uh, helps uh, try to talk to some girls in Serbian. <laughs> yeah, give, me some, give us some uh, yeah. riz in Serbian. I don't know what you want me to say. Like, I don't know. Like, you could say anything and we wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, uh-uh. yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't do that. Uh, I don't know what you want me to say. Za tebe, ali uh, ja se bojem da pričam uh, kada... Uh, oh. uh, no, I said, I said I'm scared to speak Serbian a little. I can speak oh. Serbian, I'm a little scared. Um, um, mm. I was going to say, I didn't know what you said, Oči but I'm blushing. Za, uh, huh? <laughs> I said, I didn't know what you said, but I'm blushing over here. Oči da zafalim tebe, uh, da, imam, da imam me uh, na podcast. I want to thank you for having me on your podcast. Oh, thank oh, you. Yeah. We appreciate that. Do you have any more questions? Well, we have to get to the the best part of the show. Tell me. Fun facts. Oh, my God. We're doing fun facts again? Yeah, we're always doing fun facts. All right, last thing. Fun facts. You come with one? No. I didn't know we, we always do this when we do the in-person guests. We end it with a fun fact. Okay. It can be about anything. doesn't even have to be about you. But uh, I came with one. All right, tell me. The Eiffel Tower is taller during the summertime. Why is that? By six inches, because <laughs> because the sun. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The metal expands in the by the sun. What? Really? Yeah. So wait, if it just freezes, it shrinks. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Like right? all things, though. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Uh, um, hmm. you got you want to beat me to a fun fact? Oh uh, man, I could have came prepared with one too. Yeah, but I could have thought too. So. Um, fun fact. I feel like I always have really good fun facts, like when they don't matter at yeah. all. I'm like, oh, this would be a good fun. Fa- I don't know. You got one? No, I'm so I'm so dumb. I, j- I we wrestled like matches and had practice, and I wrestled a world champion today. I'm a little tired. All right, fine. We can skip it. We can skip it. We can skip fine. it. We'll skip it. <laughs> Unless you got one. 
Anyone? I'm trying to think. Mike, let's get one. I'm Mike, trying, any, I'm anything? Trying to think right now for, uh, for me. Yeah, I'm trying to think of one for you. Um, Even something personal too. Something that no one knows about you. Yeah. Oh, um, I'll say something kind of interesting about me. Uh, not like interesting. It's just like weird. I have a so I have like a like my chest is kind of concave. And <laughs> I have like rib flare. So everyone always thinks like. Because of my, my my like body isn't it's, it's like it's my always my stomach sticks out further than like my chest does so like yeah. my ribs are always flaring up and so I kind of have like a weird thing and like I like have a high a high atal hernia so like I can't burp either what so yeah wow mm-hmm. that's Caden so burps about four hundred times a day keep crying keep complaining <laughs> keep so complaining. that's like a kind of a crazy fact about me like that is kind of like not like weird but it's just like it. Yeah, it makes things like tough, like when I'm like, especially like when I'm cutting weight, and like then I like eat a lot of food, like dude, it, like my stomach oh, kills oh, me, dude. Man. Like after tournaments, dude. Yeah, that's wow. That's actually I never yeah. even heard about that. I do have a fun fact now, since uh, I guess we're talking about food. But Crumble Cookie now has uh, a uh, <laughs> cinnamon roll square. So <laughs> <laughs> you did? Yeah, How was it? It was fire. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was really oh, good. I'm gonna have to try that. Yeah, dude, Crumble it. Cookie's I fire. I right? Australia is wider than the moon. What? No, it's not. Yeah, look it up. Australia? Australia? Like, if you wrap Australia up, or like... I think just like... Like like, like the face of it? Yeah, yeah, I think like the face of the moon, Australia is just wider than it. You know what I mean? So Not, the like, moon not the really circumference, th- but the radius. That's crazy. So, yeah. like, really, that's like... Oh, that's nuts. Do you think the moon landing is real? <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't want to get, we could be here another hour. No, I'm kidding. I don't know, dude. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I definitely think though, I don't believe in flat earth though. I definitely think yeah. earth is round, but uh, I don't, I don't think, um, I don't know about the moon landing. Isn't it crazy that we're even questioning it though? Like, well, I just think like when you, you just learn about like when you just get older and you realize like how life works and stuff like that and like how things go, like you just aren't sure about like what people always tell you and stuff and like what you learn sometimes or like people want you to learn but like i def you know what i'm saying yeah so like it's hard for me to like really think yeah, about that one that's fair okay one last question because i keep thinking no, go ahead. Fa- favorite pair of re- uh, shoes Wait, you have oh like uh, street shoes or wrestling oh, shoes um favorite shoes that i have i had uh um i like my uh, my jordan one um like Chicago uh, lost and founds that I have. Those are really mm. awesome. I also had a, I have a pair of my, I don't, I haven't worn them, but the Travis Scott, um, the, uh, the Jordan one, Travis Scott's the Brown original ones. Okay. Um, but I, I haven't worn those. And then, um, probably wrestling shoe, the ASICs, the EX. Yeah. What's the new model called though? To be TWR 900, right? Is it? What? Or is it wow. Idea. No, that I might be the, that might be the first one, but oh. I think it's just XEOs. It's just XEO, it's just like XEOs. whatever the newest ones yeah. are with like a little more grip on yep. them. Those are amazing. So yeah, I think those are my ASICs. I like. Though I just like what they do with the shoe, um, and the the way that you can just kind of mold them to your feet. But I definitely sure. think they're kind of like the premier shoe. I just think, um, not to get off like topic sure. of this, but like I definitely think like. They're like, you know how like in soccer, people have like, cle- they have boots for like, they're just like, they're just for the competition. They're like specifics. Mm-hmm. I think those are kind of like what that is for, for wrestling. Because mm-hmm. like, I feel like if you wear them too much, they can get worn out and people are like, oh, the quality. But it's yeah. like, these are supposed to be like premier shoes for like what you're supposed to compete in, you know? Mm-hmm. That makes so sense. I think like wrestling, we just don't have that like level of like, oh, here are your like trainers. And then here are your yeah. like competition boots, you know? Yeah. And it's wrestling too. Like they're doing more than just walking around like regular shoes. Like, of course they're going to get worn. Yeah. I was just saying, speaking of the moon, sure, Chicago Galaxy, baby. Woo. And the, those are really good quality because they're like heavy material. Yeah, too. they're yeah. amazing. Like I, they're heavy. They're kind of like that, like vintage style, like '90s, mm-hmm. like old, but like bring back the graphic tee. Yeah. So these are sick, but like I just think Galaxy was a cool name for us that we made it up. But yeah, yeah we're giving those away. Yeah, uh, go to or, YouTube. Yeah, go to my YouTube. I'm doing a giveaway for it right now, and then uh, we'll re- release. I think about a hundred each. For like a Oof. limited limited release for them, yeah. so like about a month from now, so we're gonna be we're gonna be dropping those. Well, I'm entered in the giveaway, so don't count me out. You're probably gonna get a, you're gonna get a shirt. So don't even, don't even cry. Both of you guys are. So. Well, thank you, but we do have a little gift for you. Oh, awesome. oh yeah, thank you. This is brought to you by Brady Shoe. He has uh, his family has this thing called the Shoe Shop. They cut oh. metal and tr- make trailers. These are awesome. Thank you guys. And more. Your Back. 29th in person guest. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks Thank so much you. for coming. Thanks back. for having me, man. Yeah. This is sweet. Yeah. Thanks for making the drive. Yeah, yeah, dude. This is this was really amazing, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely, dude. If you wanna um come back for like any, you know, like come come for training like Absolutely. this uh, and uh, probably spring, like spring summertime. Yeah. Would be really nice. Just let me know. Absolutely. Let's do it. Cool. Sweet. Thanks for watching.